Um, there is an engineer uh, from uh, Stranorder and uh, has been working in uh, Singapore and has been uh, over there actually for the past 11 years. Her name is uh, Nula McGlynn and she's part of a, a, a new initiative. It's called Visible Women. It's a, a new series. It's an initi initiative by the Irish Embassy. Uh, highlighting the the contribution of women working in often male dominated fields uh, so i'm um, glad to say that uh, nula now is joining us and we're uh, streaming online as well nula good afternoon well it's, it's good evening now what time is it over there so it's 9 p.m john we're seven hours ahead at the moment okay not singapore not, yeah not, 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 too, not too late we didn't we didn't get you too late or too early so that's the main <laughs> thing no. Anyhow, I mean, before, uh, before I had children, it would have been uh, good afternoon, but I guess now it is nighttime. <laughs> oh, yeah, nighttime. yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's a different routine altogether. And you, um, uh, you're you married over there. You've got three kids. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's busy, busy. Busy, busy, yeah. So, um, I, I, like you're saying, I came over to Singapore 11 years ago mm. and uh, met my husband here, who's from uh, the Malaysia part of Borneo. And uh, we got married actually about seven years ago, and now we have three okay. children. And I just had my third child seven weeks ago, so uh, oh, we're wow. still congratulations! So we're still in different time zones. Anyhow, I'm awake all night. <laughs> oh, I can imagine. I can imagine. But everything's going well. Oh, going perfect. Yeah, good. really good. Luckily, I had my parents out uh, a while before she arrived, so they yeah, got to meet her. <laughs> a lot of people would uh, would know your parents in Bal in the, especially in the Balba Face from order area, uh, Celine and Bartley. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, but well, I would have known Bartley through the football and Celine through the Finn Valley Post. And uh, uh, the Finn Valley Voice. Yeah. Or Finn Valley Voice, I should say. Yeah. yeah. Now, t tell us your story because we're, we're, we want to talk to you and and in particular about your career because, uh, you know, engineering, it, it's often a male dominated uh, um, a career and uh, and you've sort of bucked the trend somewhat but you started out at well first of all at school you were going to study art is that right mm -hmm. so I, yeah when i was at uh, st columbus uh, at, in, in balba in Stranorder, i mostly was interested in art and when i was uh, you know 17 18 trying to decide what i would go on to study a third level education I could not make up my mind. I couldn't decide properly on a, on a specific art course. And my career guidance counselor at the time, Jimmy Gleason, uh, suggested, why don't you try civil engineering? It's a bit like drawing on the ground. And I was like, mm. oh, yeah, that, 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 that could work. You know, I, I could give that I a go, that. Mm. you know, and went to Letterkenny IT to do a two year certificate and then a year diploma. So that uh, at that time, they, it was just a diploma level that they'd done mm. civil engineering. And I thought, well, you know, I can do it. And if it doesn't work out, it's not an entire waste of my time. I'll have a, a certificate at the end of it. But yeah. went on for the diploma, went on for the degree then in the University of Aberdeen in, in, in Dundee, Scotland. Brilliant. And then carried on working from then. I've loved, loved and it is drawing on the ground, civil engineering. And you know, my first job, I was an engineer with a theodolite out on a building site, making the points on the ground so that the the machinery, the excavators and the workers could put this all in the right place. And, yeah. you know, and that's and that is exactly what it has been like. But then, so, the, sorry, go ahead. No, no, carry on. <laughs> uh, so you 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 became a, a chartered civil engineer. So, yeah, uh, so I got my degree in the uh, University of Aberdeen. And then I got my chartership through the Institute of Civil Engineers uh, in London, uh, the UK. Uh, yeah. I just you know, went with that because I was working in the UK as well. We've got the similar in Ireland as well. And uh, yeah, and that took me about five years to get that. That's also, you know, very much, you know, when I found when I was doing that very male dominated as well, you know, but um, it's a. Uh, you have to when you're through your your universe through your work you know you have to put a cv together of all the different aspects of the work that you that you meet different uh entities that the chartership you know want you to achieve you know such as health and safety or planning and quantity and uh project management you know and people skills that you have to show you know to, to, to display to become a chartered engineer it's an important thing as well to do, specifically in engineering. Uh, for me, it was I felt it was important because I, I felt it could 
really show that that I knew what I would know. It would show my future employers. It would. It's a. It's although I have a degree, I thought it's a, this really cements the fact to my future employers. I'm respected in my field, and I do know the different uh, parts of my field, and I'm able to able to to meet the expectations of the institute. So you know, I'd be right. able to well, display that. Well, uh, well, able as as it uh, has turned out, because you you worked for uh, a while in London, and in fact, on big projects, you were involved in the Olympic Stadium. Is that right? And mm -hmm. the the athletes village yes yeah so at the at uh, down in stratford worked uh, along my company was pj carries they're based in wembley an irish company that uh, originated from Tipperary brothers uh, that set it up in uh, london and there was working on the athletes village to do the underground uh, to do all the groundworks for the 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 the, the flats that were made for the athletes that then yeah. got handed over to the people of stratford as accommodation Okay. And then working and brilliant, brilliant project to be involved in and a huge monumental project and brilliant site lend lease uh, where uh, uh, the big uh, company in charge of that at the time. And uh, it was a delight working there. And uh, a big scale project. And then you you up sticks. It was sort of um, it was sort of after the I suppose it was after the, the downfall. Th things were starting to pick up again in, in, in some ways. But you decided just so there wasn't enough of the sort of projects you were interested in, and you moved to Singapore. To yeah, start work on a big yeah, John, project. That's it. I, I could. I know. I, I I was getting magazines, you know, through the, and could see that in, all the big projects were happening magazines. out east. Industry magazines uh, and the big projects were happening out east, and right. and I could see the projects that our company that you know was working in and. It wasn't, uh, you know, this this day the the Olympics was kind of done then, and it was like, yeah, there's not much uh, more. You know, just, I was just an exciting time. Plus, I was at an age where I was. This is a good time to travel. It's a good good to get away and see something mm -hmm. new before, you know, I would get to it would get too late to do. And okay. then, yeah, working over in Singapore was the Olymp the the national stadium. So when I had arrived, it had, the Singapore had a national stadium, and when I had arrived, it had actually been demolished for the project. It was also put on hold because of the credit crunch, right. <clears throat> and um, it had a delayed start for funding. And uh, I know just how it was funded, and so then it uh, it started in line with me coming over, and so then I was able to work on that there, and uh, that that and that's where it came up in the visible woman, visible woman. Was because yeah. it now I wasn't the only female engineer on the project. You know, there was there was other female engineers, but it was a project where we've done a lot of firsts. There was a lot of firsts in engineering that was done on it, and uh, and I was involved quite heavily involved with all that on the execution of it on the on the site. So it's like pioneering work, in a way. Yeah, in a way, in a way, there was a great. You know, it was a, at the it's one of the open air stadiums. You know uh, that largest span for that and then the 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 art the piece that they talk about in the the embassy was the air conditioning of it it's the the design of the air conditioning was one of the a pioneering uh design Te done well tell us just a little bit about that uh, in that there's a, it's a retractable roof is that right on the stadium so, yeah so it's a retractable roof so it's a it opens up like and uh, closes in about two hours so you you know like if it's a bad weather you can uh, close the, uh, the the roof and then of course What's you the need capacity? to open fifty eight thousand. Okay, 58, so it's a big 000. stadium. So it's a big stadium, yeah. It's our national stadium, okay. and um, and it was uh, built you know with in mind for you doing soccer, but also doing you know rugby, doing athletics. So it's got like a retractable seats so that the capacity does reduce when the seats retract as well to make the inside larger. Okay. But, uh, Given the warm uh, weather what, over there, air conditioning mm, would be important. And, and this is, this is where some new technology came in. Yeah. Well, but, but you know, like for me, when I came over and I'm, you know, I'm brand new to Singapore and I get you no know, see that air conditioning is like you say, it's very important, mm. but at a stadium and it's, open stadium as well like for the sunshine and I, and when i heard there was air conditioning i was like well this is crazy why why would you put on air conditioning in a place where all the yeah. cold air is going to escape 
and uh you know and how bad can it be but you're sitting in heat like it can get up to mid 30 you know high low 30s high 20s to low 30s is the temperature here so if wow. you're sitting outside it gets quite hot and base, uh, but what they've done is they they've done a, a really unique design of air conditioning with uh, water tanks that have a what I kind of refer to it as a as a like a golf ball, but it's about this size with the dimples out rather than in. And when the water's pushed through them, this create gets the golf balls to knock off each other. Mm. The the chemical that's inside uh, against the cool, the water creates the cold air. This cold air is pushed out through a system through every fourth seat in the stadium. So it's uh you know it's 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 very you know it's in a, a proper uh, layout, but then that's that's the system but then the right. the cool the even cooler part of it is when you go through the, the ticketing system and you scan your ticket that tells the system which seat to cool and then outside there's two solar panel farms creating enough power to create enough energy for this operation to happen wow. so it's total renewable you no know, energy that's there for the the power is there sitting waiting to be harnessed they're picking that up and they're pushing that through and putting out cold air for all the patrons that come to watch their game. And I've been to quite a few games and events at it now. And it is such a pleasurable experience being at it because you don't feel cold air, but it's a nice, you know, cool. It makes it comfortable. It right. makes it comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. So you know it works. And so you know, I know it works. <laughs> and now and I also know to sit in the right seat. Don't don't try and steal someone else's seat. <laughs> sit uh, in your seat. <laughs> <laughs> but the system knows whether that seat is occupied, so so don't be trying to go, go down a few rows into an empty seat because yeah, you might you might be as cool down it. there. Yeah. <laughs> but but it's amazing. So if the if the capacity is reduced, it, it, it'll only be cooling the seats that are occupied. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Wow. So it's only and so the and then the extra power that's being made from the solar panel farm is being pushed into other systems that need electricity. But the the, the actual kilowatt peak that's uh, created is being used for this function. I was very impressed with that as a, you know, as coming over and, you know, I was like, I can wow, you know, this this is brilliant. This is something that should be done. You know, it's a, it's a great way to be harnessing energy, reusing. And uh, along the way, I, I mean, o over the period of time we're chatting about here from, from qualifying to now, have you noticed uh, more women popping up in roles like your own and, and more more women around the, the table at meetings? Yes, I have indeed. I mean, when, when I went to university and to, to, to Dundee, there was uh, two girls in the class out of 36. Uh, now in, in Letterkenny, there was uh, about six of us in a class of 50 originally. Uh, you know, now I'm hearing that it's, you know, like uh, through uh, chatting with, uh, I still talk to mentors, some students and all through the ICE and uh, speaking with people in Singapore. There's a lot more girls going to class now or going to university. Right. And then when I'm now working, I've got other project managers coming in to work with me on my building sites. Uh, women, yeah, like you say, women are also, you know, uh, looking after, you know, the high end part of the projects as well. There's more women are CEOs of companies now. There are more financial women than in charge. You know, there's you can see the difference now, even in my own company that I'm working with now. There's a lot more women taking up, you know, the the director's roles. Whereas when I would have started, you would have seen only male. Uh, dom yeah. It was male dominated, like in the in the roles. Okay. So, so uh, change, there's change I, I see the I see the change I see the change in Singapore, but I see the change worldwide. You know as well. I see it in Ireland as well. There seems to be a lot more interest. I think there's a lot more known about it as well. Like when I chose civil engineering, I I was given the advice by my career guidance counselor, but and and I looked into it, but maybe I, it wasn't as made aware to me that I could do it. But now I can see that there's more information out there for young girls uh, when they're choosing what they want to do they can see that this is something that's available to them so more more young women are realizing that there's there's more to it than just drawing on the ground 
there's more to it than drawing on the ground. Yeah, there's some cool, there's some cool tricks in it too. Yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> I'll bet. And what's what's life like in general in Singapore? Well, you're off work at the moment. You'll be how long? How long is maternity leave? Yeah, so maternity leave is four months, uh, okay. but shorter now than Ireland. And mm. uh, oh, you could take uh, you could take more time off with your you know with your you, you did decide with your company, but the official is four months, which is what I'll be taking uh it's it's an enjoyable place like over here i you know i enjoy it there's a good irish community the irish embassy have done a, a really good job as well of bringing that community together and making sure that we support the other irish uh, yeah. group you know irish people and irish groups that are here there's you know there's a lot happening just after covid you know there's a few mm. more events have been happening again now with people being able to meet up again there's st patrick's uh association just recently had a, a big irish ball like that was meant to be held for st patrick's day you know that had got delayed yeah so uh so there's a so there's a good a good that but i but i but i also there's a there's a good community in singapore it's a it's a very multicultural city uh there's a lot of different nationalities living here but there it's quite a lot of uh a lot of religions are respected here there's uh for, for example uh each each religion uh, has two public holidays per year. So uh, as Christians, we celebrate Good Friday and Christmas, you know, but I don't get the other public holidays off. Like I don't get Easter Monday off for, oh. you know, yeah. yeah so you know, once you're nominated. Yeah, they're, they're right. nominated, but then I'll, I'll celebrate Vesak Day or Hairi Raya. And, you know, it's all these different. Uh, yeah, so it's, yeah. it's really exciting that part of being here to get to learn a bit more about the different cultures. Well, listen, uh, uh, congratulations again on your arrival and continued success to you. And and uh, uh, and it's a, and it's 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 a great story. And, uh, you know, all the way over there in Singapore and and then leading the way and in particular leading the way for women who are considering maybe um, engineering as a as a career. Yeah. And thanks, Thank you. and you and you haven't lost your accent. You might be over there eleven years, <laughs> lost none of your accent. All right. No, thanks, no, Nila. you can't get straight Arler. Cheers. Thank no. you. Cheers, good John. Luck. Thank you very bye. much. Bye. Have a good day. Bye bye.